Hey, what's up, Rebel? Saying Ice Sticks front towards gamers. Still day one packs. We're here at the WB booth. Injustice God's among us. And who am I talking with today? Uh, my name is Hector Sanchez, and I'm a producer at NetherRealm Studios. Okay, NetherRealm. So Mortal Kombat. Okay, so what makes Injustice not Mortal Kombat? Uh, well, the first thing is that there's no Mortal Kombat characters oh, in the game. Okay. All right. The second I walked right into that one. Okay. The second thing is that it's filled with DC characters. No, seriously, the, the biggest changes between them is uh, is the fighting. Um, we obviously wanted to kind of build off of our fighting game engine, but we wanted to make it a little bit different so that char uh, people don't think that it's just a reskin of Mortal Kombat. Um, we've changed uh, the kind of uh, the attack button scheme. Uh, we used to be four attack buttons and a block button. Now we don't have a block button anymore. It's back to block like the more traditional fighting games um, and we only have three attack buttons and one gimmick button that uh, changes depending on which character that you use gimmick button yeah so a gimmick button is like uh, it's right now it's mapped to four which on PlayStation 3 is circle and on Xbox it's B and so an example of a gimmick would be uh, Wonder Woman you know she starts out fighting with her lasso but if you hit the B button she switches to a sword and shield stance um, with Superman if you hit his gimmick button he has, uh, does a brief like eight second power up where his damage does like 10 to 15 percent more damage. Uh, Cyborg regenerates health. Uh, every character has kind of a different way that they can generate and it's almost like an extra special move. So that really makes the gameplay feel a, a little bit different as well. Okay, so if I roll the left left thumbstick counterclockwise and hit X, is it going to be like a projectile? Like is it, is it, will Mortal Kombat folks just immediately like, oh, I got this. This is Scorpion, or this is right. this is Cyrex. Or yeah, so obviously the, the gameplay elements like that aren't going to change. Like, you know, you can't have a fighting game without having a down back X kind of special move or a back forward special move. So we're not reinventing the wheel in that aspect. But uh, there definitely, there's definitely enough smaller nuances that make it feel like a, a separately kind of different game. Okay, talk to me about transitions. Okay. So transitions are uh, the ability to kind of move between tiers in every arena. Uh, in Mortal Kombat and previous games before, we've had kind of like one fight line, one kind of arena where you move back and forth on. With Injustice, we wanted each arena to be a lot more expansive and a lot more bigger. So you can actually knock your opponents from these transition zones, and it plays a cinematic event that kind of puts you into another level. So you might start out at the top level of the Batcave, and you hit somebody through the transition, and all of a sudden you're in the secret bunker in the Batcave where Batman has all of his weapons kind of hidden. So every arena is going to have multiple tiers on it, and it really opens the, the gameplay options for each arena. So is, is it something you need to know? Is it a certain combo you have to hit at the right time as, a, as one opponent is on one side of the screen, or is it... Uh, my my energy is uh, my power bar is drained. It's it's the transition to the next um, match. Is that what it is? No. So it's a uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, there is one universal way that you can knock somebody into a transition, and that's holding back and hitting the three attack button, which is uh, which is A or uh, X, on the, uh, depending on if you're playing 360 or PS3. But there's also kind of big combos that end in big kind of melee hits that the players are going to discover on their own. That if you hit them in a certain uh, uh, kind of area of the arena, you'll knock somebody into transition. So there's multiple ways that you can get your characters knocked into the next level, and that's up to the player to find them and figure them out. What was the wager? What was that? So the wager is Injustice's kind of version of the combo breaker. In Mortal Kombat, uh, if somebody was wailing on you with a big kind of combo, you can kind of hit, uh, and you had two bars of your meter, you could actually hit block uh, and forward, and you would uh, kind of break up the combo and give you a chance to kind of reset yourself. In Injustice, we've kind of taken that concept and uh, evolved it a little bit. And uh, we're going to have a, a little bit more explanation about that as we fine-tune the mechanics of it getting closer to launch. But the basic, uh, the basic kind of premise of it is your betting meter uh, versus your health. So if you're attacking me and I break up your combo, uh, I'm actually sacrificing some of my meter to take back some of the damage that you've inflicted on me. So it's kind of a mind game that kind of lets you know, like, what's more important? Is my meter important or is the damage that you're about to inflict on me uh, more important? And it's, a, it's kind of a mix and match and mind game that goes into That's that. That's interesting. I like that. It's definitely a little more strategic. Like, all right, do I do this or do I hold off? Exactly. I mean, if you're hitting me with a 17% combo, is that really worth it for me to give up my my super move that's going to inflict guaranteed 40% damage against
against you. And it depends where I'm at in the match right now, right? Like, if I'm down, if I have half a health bar left, that 17% is going to make a big deal. But if I have a huge health lead, no way. Like, go ahead and have your little hit. I'm going to save my meter to unleash my big super attack that's going to take you down 40 to 50% on the super attack. So there's definitely some mechanics that play into it, a lot of depth that's going to get into it. And, and we'll have a lot more explanations about it coming up close to the thing. But it's a really cool mind game that adds another layer of complexity. And it's definitely, I like the, I like the cinematic feel to it. Like, there's definitely not... It feels like there's, I don't know how that's going to feel with the fighting, but there's a lot of breaks for cinematic, like pauses and, and good shots with the camera. And uh, what, what was the decision there? So Ed Moon, our boss, really, really likes those big kind of cinematic over-the-top events. You know, it's one of those things, it's it's the eye-catching moments, right? Like, obviously, the DNA of our team comes from kind of the arcade kind of, uh, you know, old-school style, right? You want these kind of big events so that if somebody's walking by and sees you playing, it catches their eye and you're like, wow, what was that? Like, I want to see that again. So this is just an evolution of that. Like, we really want to have these big events that really make it feel over-the-top, very cinematic, very summer blockbustery, very kind of like, you know, dark night rises kind of thing where we just have like these big events that happen in the match and players seem to resonate towards them. In MK we had fatalities and uh, and x-rays and now in Injustice we have super moves and transitions so it's just a natural evolution of that kind of uh, big eye-catching moment. So no fatalities in this, huh? Yes, there are no fatalities in it. That's another way that this kind of sets Injustice apart. Uh, as much as it would probably be cool to see Batman rip uh, Catwoman's spine out and beat her to death with it, uh, I don't think uh, DC or, uh, yeah. or the fans would like would really appreciate those kind of things so uh, it fits into it you know it allows us we have a we have a limited amount of violence and gore that we can like get away with with the license so we have to use it in their specific part it's still hard hitting and it's still super intense and people are going to get into it but yes unfortunately we're not going to chop up uh, wonder woman okay and there seems to be two types of characters you got your strength characters and you got your speed characters like the flash and nightwing are there any other types, or are those the two primary right there? Those are, right now, those are kind of the two uh, primary parts that we're working on right now. Like, obviously, there might be some evolution or some combination of the two as we get closer and balance the game a little bit. But we basically want to kind of... Uh, limited to, to just a certain amount so that people kind of understand. Obviously, somebody fighting as Harley Quinn isn't going to fight the same way as Superman, nor would you want them to. They're two completely different types of characters. All right, well, sounds great. Uh, I'm not a big fighting game guy, but I got my hands on it. it definitely, it feels great. Oh, storyline. What, what, what in the hell is going on with this? <laughs> Yeah, so the details of story mode are going to be released over the future, but I can tell you is that basically the tagline of this game is, uh, what if our hero, greatest heroes became our greatest threat, right? Um, what if Superman was a bad guy? Like, what would the Earth do? What if Batman was a bad guy? You know, what if Harley Quinn was the person that needed to save us? Uh, the storyline is kind of revolves around this kind of uh, alternate flipping of the universe where all of a sudden everything is upside down and it's allowed us to do a lot of really, really cool things with the characters and and the, and the storylines that uh, that are, are really going to be a, a fresh take on the entire DC universe. Speaking of the storyline, is it going to play out the same way that the Mortal Mortal Kombat revamp did, where you were playing like first first round you play as you know uh, Scorpion, the next round you play is it. Is it it was a great way to learn all the characters, and it forced you to play with characters you wouldn't typically play with. Right. Is that kind of where you guys going to go with this? Yeah, so we're going to build upon that. This That was actually the second kind of uh, iteration of that story mode. We started out in MK versus DC Universe where we kind of had that, where you played character chapters. You started out with one character and, like, you played it. In MK versus DC Universe, we had this kind of cool way where you were playing the, the, the story from both sides, right? You would play the DC side, and then you would play the same story from the Mortal Kombat point of view. People really liked like that we really got into it. it like you said it was a cool way to force people to play the different characters and we kind of expanded upon that in uh, MK we did the same thing but we just made it bigger and bigger and bigger you know it went from 45 minutes to an hour of cinematic scenes to like two hours worth of cinematic scenes and uh, you, if you know us we never do anything small so for this one we're really taking it to the next level and we're going to see a really big evolution in story mode of how it's going to play out there's those basic uh, elements that we've had there of playing different characters per chapter are still going to be there but we're we're going to spice it up and add a couple more elements as well. So it's going to be something that people should really look forward to. All right. Well, thanks again, Hector. Certainly appreciate it. Have a great show. No problem, man. All Thank right. you. Uh, Shanghai 6 out.